Have you ever wondered how I do text animations like this? Today, we're gonna dive into Canva and I'm gonna show you how it's done. The first thing we need to do is get into the proper dimensions, go to your Canva homepage, go to video, create a blank video. Then what you need to do, go down to the apps on the left-hand side, you're gonna type in the word type. You want this one that says type gradient. We're gonna open that up. I have a full tutorial about type gradient and I will leave that in the description box below. We typed in the word animation. You can choose any font you want. I'm gonna use Anton, it's one of the ones I love. For this one, we're gonna choose center alignment. It's one word, don't need to change the line height. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to leave the gradient just like it is. We're going to add this to design. Here's the word we're going to animate, and you could make this any word or any phrase that you want. I'm going to show you a little trick. You're going to right click this word and download selection. We're going to download as a PNG and as it, with a transparent background. Transparent background is key for making this effect work. I will leave a link to a free Canva Pro trial in the description box below. We're going to go ahead and download this. And of course, I need to upload it back into Canva. I'm going to get rid of that because I don't need it anymore. We're going to upload file and then upload this file right here, which says animation. The difference between this one is that when I click this one, it will bring back type gradient up to rearrange things. And this is now technically an image. What I can do with this is add the outline that I want. So we're gonna go to edit photo. On the FX tab right here, scroll down and you're gonna look for shadow and do a shadow outline. You can make this shadow outline as thin or as thick as you would like. Even change it to be blurry or something if you would like that. We're just going to leave it like that for simplicity's sake. We're going to hide the sides so that we can play with this. Sizing really doesn't matter on this, but you don't want it to be super small. And I want to make sure that it is aligned properly. So I can do that one of two ways. One is I can left click on my mouse and make sure that the center of this word has the cross hairs in it, right? So that tells me that it's positioned in the center of the middle. The other way I can do it is by clicking position and going to the center and the middle. And because I created this text, in the center, that's why that works. Now we're going to create the animation. Click on animate and scroll down until you see stomp. There are several ways that you can create the stomp animation. You can do on both, on enter, and on exit, which on exit it just kind of fades out. You want it to go on enter. It's very simple, on enter. If I play this, you will see what happens. It stomps it. We're gonna leave it at five seconds, but we're gonna download this. Animation stomp, I'm gonna name it, and then I'm gonna download this as an MP4 video. Once it downloads, I will re-upload this in to Canva. We're gonna go to upload and upload that video that we just created. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this. Here is a video. If you've ever wanted to create a blur. Now, the video that I'm showing, it has nothing to do with this. I just want to show you how you would put it on a video clip to get that stompy animation. So now we're gonna click this five second animation and put it right on top of the video so that you can't see the video that's behind it. The other thing I'm going to do while I've 
got this set up is I'm going to click on this back video, right click and extract audio because I want to be able to see this audio waveform. I'm going to click zoom page and then scoot this audio waveform just like that. Make sense? That way I can see the audio waveform really clearly. Now I'll be able to put this back where it goes. There's two tricks within Canva. The first trick is getting the timing right. And the second trick is transparency. So we're going to get the timing. Actually, we're going to do the transparency first. We're going to click transparency and we will reduce the transparency. However much you want to reduce the transparency to be able to see the video behind it, that's what you want to do. So we've got this. The next thing has to do with the timing. You're going to right click on the animation and then click on show timing. This is going to bring up another purple layer or another layer of what the animation looks like. So if I move this this way, I've just used my mouse and I'm moving it that way. The animation, if you've ever wanted to create a blurry background in a picture for your YouTube videos or the animation will not come in until it pops up on screen. So here there is no text animation. Here the text animation shows up. We can scroll over to the right and reduce the size to whatever it is, however long we want that animation to stay up. So if I play it, or, or that may be a little too long, so we're going to go ahead and scoot it in. To level it up, you can add a sound effect, and I've got a sound effect on my hard drive, but my sound effect actually is not an audio file, it's a video file. Actually, you know what? This is a perfect reason to use it. Fix so we're going to do a rake, rake swoosh. I found these sound effects in YouTube Studio Audio Library. There's my sound effect. I'm actually going to extract the audio so that it's there and then get rid of the video. That's another reason why I'm loving this extracted audio file. And then I can slide it right underneath where this timing is going to come into play. You're not going to be able to hear it, but it levels up that animation. If you want to know more about customizing the type gradient, like I didn't show in this video, then watch this video next. And I'll see you next time. Bye.